Hello, welcome back to my channel. Uh, uh, today, today I am doing a book haul for the months of September and October. I tend to do my book hauls bi-monthly and I have 18 books spread over those two months. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so first off in September, I acquired 14 books. Uh, first off, we've got a copy of Trail of Lightning by Rebe Rebecca Rowenhorst. I got this off of Pango, a used copy, um, and I'm on the hunt for a uh, copy of the second book in the series. I've read both of these. I really enjoy them. I definitely feel like I'm going to return to them at some point. So I wanted to have a copy of my own. Um, <laughs> next, I picked up, this is going to look familiar, I picked up this copy of Gone with the Wind. Wait, didn't I already have a copy of Gone with the Wind? Yes, I had a much more well-loved copy of Gone with the Wind that I found in a little free library and I read recently and I loved it and I hate that I love it because there's so much awful things in it, but it also like, it made me think. It made me think in a way that is a feeling I love when I get that from reading. So. <laughs> So uh, I found a used copy of the same film adaptation cover of the other one because the free library books, I want to return to free libraries. I, I want to treat them like actually like libraries. But what I did was I actually went through and moved all of my tabs from the version I read to this one because I'm a nerd. Then I grabbed, I acquired six books from a little used bookstore near my workplace. Um, so I picked up a copy of The Planet by Deva Sobel, Dava Sobel, Deva Sobel. Uh, I picked up this one because I do have, I do like to read science nonfiction dealing with space. And, uh, so far I have not read any from, um, female authors. So I got this one, learning more about The Planet. I picked up a copy of Nomadland, which I've actually already read and I talk about in my last month's wrap up. Um, this is a Nomadland, Surviving America in the 21st Century. Then I picked up The Silence of Bones. I think this one was like only a dollar. It was on their, um, the discount cart at outside the, outside of the bookstore. And this one, so The Silence of Bones is set in Joseon Dynasty era Korea, which is 1800, and it follows um, 16 year old Sil who gets involved in a murder investigation. Yeah, she ends up helping this inspector who is tasked to um, investigate a, a murder. So I'm like, hmm, which, um, like, not uh, historical fiction isn't a genre I read a lot in, but I am interested in like forensic investigations and criminal investigations in a historical setting because I'm curious about like how were they, how would somebody conduct an investigation with the technology available at that time. So there's that one. Uh, I picked up All Systems Red by Martha Wells, the first of the Murderbot diary novellas. Uh, this is something that lots of people rave about and I feel like I would enjoy it. Um, so I found the first uh, novel, novella and picked it up. On a similar vein, I picked up Autonomous by Annalie Newitz. The kind of tagline back here is, when anything can be owned, how can we be free? Oh, <laughs> neoliberal dystopian future. Great. <laughs> Earth 2144, Jack is an anti-patent anti scientist turned drug pirate, traversing the world in a submarine as a pharmaceutical Robin Hood, fabricating cheap scripts for poor people who can't otherwise afford them. It's fiction, but for how long? Anyway, I think it'll be fun. We've got quite a few Pango purchases. <laughs> um, uh, then I picked up To Hold the Bridge by Garth Nix. Um, this is a short story collection set in his old kingdom world. And this is the, there's, he has two of them. He has To Hold the Bridge and Across the Wall. And I didn't have this one and I now own all of the Old Kingdom books except for the brand new one that just got released which is on my Christmas list. We'll see if I get, we'll see how soon I acquire that one, but I will be acquiring Tercio, Tercio and, what is it? Tercio and Eleanor. I will be acquiring that one at some point. Anyway, there's this one. 
Um, then I found a copy of La Ciudad de las Bestias, which is uh, the Spanish version of The City of the Beast by Isabel Allende. City of the Beast is a book that is on my Amnesia Reads project. So, hey, if I needed to reread it to see if I liked it and wanted to keep it, why did I acquire another copy of it? Um, because I also have a goal of, like, trying to read a couple of books a year in Spanish, and YA is kind of my reading level, so I thought, hey, I'll read this in Spanish to kind of get that book off of my Amnesia Reads TBR whenever I get to it. And then I picked up... Young Warrior Stories of Strength, edited by Tamora Pierce and Josepha Sherman. So I own, um, so Tamora Pierce is one of my favorite authors and I own everything that she has published, uh, except this one, which I thought was a collection of her short stories, but it, tur but it turns out that she's just the editor of it. Wait, does she have, I think she has a short story in here. I didn't realize that it was full of a bunch of other authors. Anyway, so I think with this, my Tamora Pierce collection is complete until she publishes another book, which I hope will be soon, but I know she's had health problems on and off the years and also pandemic, but there's that. And then even though I had purchased such a plethora of books, um, I was having lunch with my mother-in-law and I was like, hey, do you want to go to the little to my favorite indie bookstore that's near me um, just because she's also an avid reader and a supporter of indie bookstores so uh, while I was there I found a secondhand copy of The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite I read this earlier this year this is a uh, female female romance that features a young woman who is um, an astronomer who has ba who um, has basically done a bunch of the work that her father took credit for, and now she's trying to get recognition as a scientist in her own right, and she um, receives the patronage of a very wealthy woman who um, wants to support the arts and support women in the arts. Um, and there's also so women in science, women in the arts, and like. Um, gay, I, I love that there's like a dual story of like women in science getting recognition for some, in that and also like women in the arts um, because the patroness is a very skilled embroiderer but because like embroidery is like a woman's task like it's not recognized as a fine art but the stuff she creates is as fucking worthy of being in the museum as anything else so um, and then their romance is super sweet so I really loved it it made me feel so many things so this is definitely, I feel like, one of the romances I would give my time to to revisit. Then I pick up the first copy. What is this? Oh, oh I found um, a secondhand copy of the first volume of Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Um, yeah, illustrations. Lovely. Um, I've heard lots of good things. I'm not even really sure what it's about, but um, it's this has been kind of just like on my radar of... A graphic novel series I would like to dip my toes in. And then um, it was on sale because it was part of, uh, it was a featured book club book for one of the book clubs run by this bookstore. Um, so it was on sale. I picked up a copy of In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is actually one of my picks for nonfiction November of this month. Um, and this is a memoir that explores the author's relationship with an abusive relationship um, and it's told through the metaphor of this house. So those are all the books I picked up in September. And I was feeling like, that's a lot of books. I should buy less books the following month. And I did buy less. I acquired four books. So the first book I picked up was an ebook copy of Consumed by Aja Barber, The Need for Collective Change, Colonialism, Climate Change, and Consumerism. Um, so I had actually pre-ordered a physical copy of this like back in August with an expected September publication date in the US. And then because of the material shortages in publishing, the release date just kept pushing back and pushing back for the physical copy. And finally, um, the indie bookstore where I had pre-ordered this had canceled my pre-order because they're like, hey, it, we cannot keep holding your money in good faith when we don't actually have um, a release date for this or like a date for when we're actually gonna be able to fulfill your pre-order, um, which like, 
it's a bummer, but I, I appreciate that they're like, we don't know when we're going to be able to fill your order, so it doesn't feel right to hold your money. Um, so I ended up buying a uh, ebook copy of this, which is probably more on brand for the book because ebooks are maybe a little bit more environmentally friendly than physical books. But but now I'm not going to be able to lend unless I lend someone my e-reader. I'm not going to be able to lend them the ebook because I also I know you can lend books in your Amazon library to other books in your Kindle library to other Kindle users. But I bought this on Kobo, so I don't know if I can do that on Kobo. Anyway, um, I've talked about this a lot. Uh, this is also another pick for Nonfiction November of this month, so I'm hopefully going to get to that one soon. Um, yeah, this is one of my, probably my most anticipated nonfiction release of the year, and definitely probably like in my top five anticipated releases of the year. Um, great. And then uh, another Pango purchase, this is actually kind of an impulse purchase because I wanted it and I didn't want to risk someone else snatching it out from under me. Um, this is uh, Accessory to War. The Unspoken Alliance Between Astrophysics and the Military by Neil deGrasse Tyson and Avis Lang. I just have the book jacket because I am reading the physical book and the book is in the other room and I didn't want to bother going to get it because I wanted to show you the actual cover anyway. Um, so I'm about like a quarter of the way through it and it is um, a history of how um, uh, discoveries and technology uh, developed by astronomy and astrophysics um, have had uses in the military and have had um, and have been what is the grammar I want to use um, how you know the study of the heavens has had a direct beneficial and like symbiotic relationship with the purview of the military in terms of exploration conquest defining borders national security, etc. Um, so yeah, this is again, also got a lot of a uh, nonfiction November picks right here. Um, but I will have more, uh, I will have more of a discussion about this when I do my November wrap up. Um, but yep, there's that. Oh, this was exciting. I want a book in a giveaway. I want A Clash of Steel by C.B. Lee. So uh, I won this in a, an Instagram giveaway from LGBTQ reads on Instagram. Um, I don't enter into a lot of Instagram giveaways because they always ask you to tag other people, which I feel weird about doing. Mostly because, like, I'm not going to tag people for my benefit without their permission, and I don't currently have someone who's like, hey, uh, I'm cool with you tagging me in giveaways, um, because yay books. And I'm, you know, if I'm not interested in the post, I'm just not going to interact with it. But like at the moment, anyway, so they had a giveaway for A Clash of Steel, which is a um, queer Asian retelling of Treasure Island. Um, a Treasure Island remix, it says. It's set in 1826 and the sun is setting on the golden age of piracy and the legendary dragon fleet to the scourge of the South China Sea. Um, oh, and it came with this art print that I'm not sure if the costumes are accurate to the time period, but um, hooray, sapphic romance. We'll love to see it. So, and I love Treasure Island. Treasure Island is definitely like one of the classics I've read like as a teenager. And I was like, oh, classics can actually be really interesting. This is great. So, um there's that. Yeah, I will have a link to uh, LGBTQ Reads Instagram in the description box if you would like to check them out. And thank you so much for selecting me as the winner. It's exciting. Last book. This was another one that uh, a copy came available on Pango and I was like, that is a book that's really high on my want to reads list and I know it has a lot of buzz. So I'm gonna buy it without waiting too long because I don't want someone else to grab it, and that is Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. This is a nonfiction book. The author of the widely praised word slut analyzes the social science of cult influence, how cult-ish groups, from Jonestown and Scientologists to Soul Cycle and social media gurus, use language as the ultimate form of power. 
Um, so, um, that, uh, and who is, I think it was, a uh, Books Like Woe talked about this, maybe, like, in her scientific in her Scientology bit video, but I think she's also talked about this in a wrap-up, and it just sounded really interesting. Um, because in addition to really loving, like, science nonfiction, I'm also interested in nonfiction that kind of critically looks at the concept of religion and its influence on um, current events and current social structures. So I feel like this is gonna feed into that. Those are all the books. Uh, let me know if you have read any of these or if any of these are also on your TBR. Let's chat in the description. Let's not in the description box because you can't access that. Let's chat in the comments. There we go. Okay. Uh, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I encourage you to go out into the world and be curious. And I will catch you folks in my next video. Bye!